Great. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so welcome to the third session of our CMS virtual event series, The Trainee Takeover. Very exciting. Um, my name is Karen and I'm the Early Talent Acquisition Advisor um, here at CMS, or one of the Early Talent Acquisition Advisors. I'm based in the Glasgow office, not that you can tell because of my lovely background, but I'm one of the of a team of Early Talent Acquisition Advisors based at, uh, here at CMS. Um, you'll be pleased to hear, you won't be hearing too much from me today. Um, I know you're here to hear about more about what life as a trainee at CMS is like. Um, but I will be facilitating today's session and I'll be making sure that everything runs smoothly for you this afternoon. Um, so alongside the Meet and Engage team, I'm also joined by my colleague Ella. Um, so she'll be covering, she's another member of the Early Talent Acquisition team and she'll be running the chat for you. Um, so please start to think about any questions that you might have um, for our trainees and post them in the chat. Um, just so you know, there will be a Q&A session at the end, um, and, but Ella, Ella will be continuing to work hard throughout and be answering any questions that she can. So feel free to pop them in as we go along. Um, just to say, I know you might think it, no question is too small or silly. Our trainees here were in, that, in your position not too long ago, so they know exactly what it is like. So anything you think of, just pop it into the chat there. Um, and yeah, with anything sort of without further ado, I'm just going to move on to the, um, a quick question for you all. So on a scale of one to five, how well do you think you know what a life as a trainee is like? OK, so I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to sort of submit your responses to that when the poll pops up on your screen. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to our trading contracts at CMS. So the main route to, a training, to securing a trading contract CMS is through our CMS Academy, um, and that's our three-week uh, vacation scheme. Um, so this is the same for you if you are in your under, uh, an undergraduate, a graduate, a postgraduate, a career changer, or even a current paralegal at CMS. So absolutely everyone goes through the CMS Academy. And the reason for that is we want you to all have the same shared experience. Uh, we believe it's a really different programme. It gives you a real insight to, into life at CMS. So that's why no matter what stage you are in your career, you'll be going through that programme. If you are successful in securing a training can contract and um, following the completion of the academy, you will join us once you've completed any postgraduate qualifications. So depending on where you're based, that could be the postgraduate diploma followed by the SQE or just the SQE itself. Um, so obviously what you need to complete um, and when you need to complete it will vary depending on the stage of your academic journey. Um, and as I say, where you, what location you're applying to, where you're based in the world, where you're studying. Um, don't worry too much about any of those elements at this point. Um, if you are successful in securing a training contract, you'll obviously re receive support from us and we will guide you through the process. Um, and where required, we will also provide the funding for that as well. Um, so once you start with us, you will join on your two year training contract and you will complete four six month, uh, six month long seats, um, each in a different practice area. And this can include client secondments and international secondments as well. So before I, uh, sorry, I'll go into the next slide, sorry, and then I'm going to reveal the results of the poll. Um, so in terms of our training contracts, um, we have training contracts across the UK and internationally. Um, our newest international edition is for our opportunity in Sofia, Bulgaria, which is quite exciting. And we also have um, a training contract in Dubai as well. Um, please note that the location you complete your CMS Academy is where you will start your training contract. So, for example, if you do complete the CMS Academy in Dubai, that's where you will be expected to complete your training. So one thing obviously to do is before you submit your application forms, make sure you've actually thought sort of of the longevity of your career and where you actually see yourself going forward. Um, because as I say, there's no, we, we, we don't sort of, um, you, you can't switch midway through. So as I say, if you see yourself um, long term in Aberdeen, then absolutely that's where to submit your application form for. Equally, if it's in London or Dubai, just make sure you've thought a little bit ahead before you submit your application form. So before I go on, I'm just going to read the results of that poll. So how well do you think you understand what life as a trainee is like at CMS? Um, so, da -da -da. so it's all very mixed, to be honest. 
we're going to go, we've gone bang average really is the highest. 40% of you feel that it's quite well, um, extremely well, just 2%, very well, 5%. Um, and 37% of you know a little bit. So completely varied, but it sounds like we could all um, we could all do with hearing a little bit more today, which is great, which is why absolutely why we are here. Um, so as I say, you won't be hearing too much from me today because you're here to hear from the trainees. Um, so I'm going to move on to the reason why you're all here today. So I'm really excited to be welcoming four of our trainees. We are joined by Rachel, Ewan, Josh and Jade, um, and they're each going to spend a few minutes just introducing themselves and talking about their experiences here as a trainee at CMS. Uh, they all have different journeys and are at varying stages in their training contracts, so can provide unique insights, which is why we've got a few of them on board today. Um, we will then invite them to answer your questions, so do please keep the questions coming in in the chat. Um, and as I say, we'll be opening up the session at the end, so you can sort of they can um, answer your questions in real time as well. So I'm now going to hand over to Rachel first of all. Hi, so um, I'm Rachel. I'm a second seat trainee in the restructuring and insolvency department in London, and that's the subsection within our finance department. Um, I originally studied history at Exeter um, before design, deciding to pursue a training contract, um, and I decided to take part in a couple of vacation schemes um, with a really different firm, so like a US firm, a Silver Circle, and the regional firm, and then also a CMS, and I undoubtedly enjoyed CMS the most. Um, so a typical day in kind of the life of a trainee is really hard to ever kind of sum up what typical it is. But to kind of give a rough indication, I would get into the office around kind of 930. Um, and that's slightly different a lot or well, slightly later than in my first seat in real estate. Uh, and that that's kind of where people tend to come into the office a little bit earlier and then finish earlier. Whereas in my current seat, it tends to be that we'll come in a little bit later and finish a little bit later. Um, and I think that's kind of part and parcel of being a trainee is just kind of getting used to that different working pattern within a team. Um, so firstly, I'll look at my emails throughout the day and see what's coming overnight or what might have come in, in the morning. And I'll just kind of take start, stock of the various tasks that I might have to do and look to kind of prioritise the most important and then see which ones have longer deadlines and can perhaps be pursued later on. Um, so as with yesterday, I might have a client meeting in the morning. Um, a lot of these, well, most of them tend to be on team still. Um, and my job within this would be to take meeting notes and then after the meeting, circulate the meeting notes for my team and just tidy these up and make sure that we have a good record of what's been said. Um, and then as part of the project management role uh, of a trainee, and this kind of very much varies from different matters, but on the transaction that we're on at the moment, uh, the partner very much likes that we will circulate a to-do list um, after say meetings like that. So everyone can kind of keep stock of uh, the tasks that they have to do and what's allocated to everyone and just to make sure we're on top of all the various work streams. Um, so one of the tasks that came out of the meeting was to obtain fig figures for various advisors and that's because we're on a big litigation at the moment so it's just kind of obtaining all the data that we can for the witness statement um so my job within that would be to uh, speak to the different advisors um and just get that information to put into the witness statement um, and then another task would be to for example find different um, advice notes that we've previously sent and then I can review these and send them on to an associate who can kind of take stock of where we are with our advice to the client um, again, the tasks that come up can be really sporadic, but it's always really nice in my team. Um, I get on really well with the other trainee, uh, so I often kind of go for a coffee in London. Uh, we really enjoy uh, kind of looking for better ones or trying to find the nicest one. I think at the moment we're very much sold on Roslyn. Um, and then we, um, I'm sorry, I might uh, get involved with different uh, tasks depending on um, kind of um, how much responsibility each uh, associate or partner wants to give you. Um, so sometimes the task can be really administrative, but in the same vein, they can also be really, really interesting. So a lot of the tasks that I get involved with in restructuring insolvency are research, which I really enjoy. And that's certainly something that's quite different to real estate, whereas a lot more transaction, I think you get a lot more responsibility in real estate. Um, and so again, research is something that's really um, 
that I'm very likely to get involved with. And again, sometimes drafting like the first cuts of correspondence to clients or to different advisors. Um, and then at the end of the day, I will probably just turn, again, take stock with of any tasks that I have to uh, take hold of to take home. If I need to, I'll go home and get some dinner and log on again. But a lot of the uh, times I can, I think the team are really good here in kind of supporting trainees to make sure that they manage their workload. That's not always the case. Um, and so roughly that's kind of how a day in my life and restructuring and solvency goes. But again, this is so kind of different across teams. And I think you certainly get more and more responsibility as you go on um, and kind of get a real range from kind of the more initiative tasks to a lot more responsibility. So drafting correspondence and research um, and having the first cut of documents. Cool. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Josh. I'm a first seat trainee working in the infrastructure, construction and energy disputes team. And that's ICE for short. And that's I'm based out of the, the Sheffield office. Um, so I'm going to touch on my experience of sort of the working culture and the, kind of the work life balance at CMS as a trainee. Um, I'll just, I should mention, I'll apologise in advance for my slides. They're not, they're not that good, but um, hopefully they do serve as some, some form of um, visual aid. Um, I thought it might be helpful if I just briefly touched on my route into the firm. So I studied law and criminology at Manchester, graduated in 2019. I then got a job as a paralegal actually in, um, in CMS in the Manchester non-construction team. And I was there for sort of just over two and a half years. So while I still was still paralegal, I sort of really got to know the firm well. And so I decided to apply to the CMS Academy in June 21. And then I got a training contract off the back of that. Um, so I then left the firm to study LPC and then, of course, joined again as a trainee in August. Um, so that's essentially me in a nutshell. Um, and I think I just wanted to mention as an aside, if anyone is considering doing paralegal work um, after sort of your degree, um, I would really recommend it. I think my experience as a paralegal was like really invaluable and I was able to develop lots of skills and get a good sense of what it means to do work at a top commercial firm. And I think it really put me in good stead um, in training contract interviews and sort of assessment centres as well. Um, so just on to kind of the working culture itself and the work-life balance. So with regard to sort of training hours, um, I put a little snippet on my slide um, as to what sort of legal cheek thinks CMS's typical working hours are. And so I think they generally consider that it, um, it goes from sort of 9 a.m. to sort of 20 past 7 finish. I think that can be sort of a, a helpful as a, a general guide. But what I've tended to find, and I think that Rachel touched on it earlier, is that it tends to fluctuate a lot in respect to the hours that you can be working. So I think as a trainee, you'll have some quiet moments in the team where you might not be able to get away from your desk at sort of half five, six or, or slightly later. But then there'll also be some kind of really, really busy periods where you might find yourself working um, a lot later into the evening um, as you and the rest of the team try and get something over the line for a client. And I think all the variables in that sort of include the type of team that you're in and, and how much team that how much work that team actually has on at the time. So I think, for example, in the corporate teams, and when they have um, a busy spell, I think the hours can be quite intense. Whereas in other other teams, there might just be slightly less demand and slightly less billable work. So the hours can be slightly more normal, I think. Um, so I think with that in mind, it's just really important to be adaptable and sort of be flexible with working hours as they can just change quite a lot. And also just remember to try and enjoy the quiet periods and not feel too guilty about having them because um, obviously you will have uh, busy periods as well. So I think when it's all said and done, your quieter periods will end up sort of equalizing your busy periods. And I think you might end up having, on average, a finish around 7 p.m. like um, like Legal Chica is suggesting, which hopefully does give you some time to have a work-life balance and, you know, enjoy your personal life as much as you can. Um, so just on that point around finishing times, I want to mention that um, there's usually no pressure at all um, from associates in the team or partners for you to stay longer than you need to. I think if you get the work done and that's it for the day, most associates will sort of tell you to, to go home and just enjoy the rest of your evening. So I think it's worth mentioning. And then also the partners tend to be sort of really flexible too and will tend to understand that you have a life outside of work and will try to accommodate that if you let them know. So for example, I live in Manchester, but I'm based in Sheffield uh, and I've been sort of told multiple times that I don't need to stay around if it's, there's a train I need to catch to get home, um, which is always really helpful to know. So then just kind of on the, the culture of the teams themselves, um, in my experience, I found that um, everyone that I've worked with has, has, has been incredibly lovely and really, really friendly. I think it's fair to say that everyone at all levels of seniority are like keen to help as much as possible and support you in any way they can, especially as a junior member of the firm, which I think is sort of really nice and is sort of conducive to creating an environment that you feel comfortable in 
and that you can be yourself and basically just do really well in as well. Um, and I think there tends to be kind of a non-hierarchical nature to the teams themselves. Everyone tends to muck in when they, they need to get something done, um, regardless of the level they're at. So, for example, in the team that I'm in, um, we've had to carry out quite a long task involving um, inserting links into an electronic trial bundle, which is, to be honest, is quite a boring task, but it had to be done. And I think everyone from my level all the way up to sort of senior associates in the team all got stuck in together over the line. Um, so, yeah, just an example of the way that we work in that respect. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to cover, really. I hope that was sort of helpful. I've actually just stuck my um, details on the end of the slides there, just in case you do have any questions after today. So do feel free to sort of reach out. I'll be happy to uh, happy to help. And I'll just pass you on over to Jade. Yep, thanks, Josh. Um, hi, everyone. My name's Jade. I am a first seat trainee sitting in the insurance and reinsurance group at the Bristol office. Um, in terms of my journey to CMS, I studied criminology at the University of Leicester, um, graduating in 2019. I then did the law conversion course at BPP in 2020, um, did my CMS Academy in 2021 and started um, here at CMS this August. So I'm about two months into my first seat um, and I thought it would be quite interesting to share my experiences as a first seat trainee and whether it was what I was expected when joining the firm. Um, so I think one of the first things I was curious about was the actual working culture. Um, I, of course, knew when applying to CMS that it's a really friendly place to work. But as my academy was virtual, I hadn't had that in-office experience yet. And I remember thinking to myself, um, how do I approach people in the office? Is everyone on headsets all the time? Can you go up to a partner's desk? Things like that, um, that you don't really know who to ask those questions. But honestly, everyone is very lovely and approachable in the office. Um, for my first day, I was um, having lunch with not just trainees, but associates and partners. And that was across different teams. Um, so people are always happy to have a chat and um, grab a coffee. And if you have any questions, um, you always feel comfortable to just ask them, um, which is really reassuring. And that that's just not with lawyers. That's everyone in the team at CMS. Um, you also get to meet a lot of people across different offices, especially if you join uh, the CMS networks. Um, so, for example, I joined the CMS charity committee. And, and I'm taking part in organising one of their Christmas events. So people are really keen for you to get involved, even as a, a first seat trainee, which is really great also. Um, in terms of the actual work I'm doing, as I said, I'm an insurance trainee. And um, one of the things I didn't expect was the level of responsibility I would be given um, as a first seater. Um, I had no experience in insurance. Um, I didn't do any electives on that in my LBC or any paralegaling. So I was really worried that I would be out of my depth. But by the second, third week, I was being trusted to send out emails to barristers, to um, experts. I was doing um, research reports, analysing evidence under uh, my supervisor's review. So um, you do sort of just get stuck into it. And I think what really helped me was the um, in-depth training that they provide um, per um, whatever department you're sitting on. Um, so a week um, after my overall training induction, I had a full day of insurance training um, in London where you basically get an overview of everything you want to know about, about IOG. And um, as I'm in a contentious seat, um, I also get disputes training, which is actually really helpful as well. Um, and that's across all different um, sectors. So that was really interesting also. Um, we also have an internal website where you can have access to presidents, templates, um, different legal research, search engines. So anything you, you're not sure about, um, I would say 90% of the time you would find the answer there. And the other 10%, if you're not sure, you could always just ask your supervisor or someone around you. Again, people are really um, happy to share um, their input and advice. Um, and yeah, so no matter how small the question is, I, I always just feel it's best to just ask because it's better than just sitting there and, and worrying because people really don't want that. Um, 
And I would say in IRG in particular, it's quite fast paced because with contentious seats, there's so many deadlines and filings for courts. So um, if you ever feel like you're getting too much work or you don't have enough work on, um, people always say just reach out, um, talk about how you're feeling, talk about how much work you have on. Um, again, they're really happy to help and take it off you. It doesn't reflect on you if you have too much, because sometimes what happens is everyone wants to give you work because they want you to be involved. But just being honest and sharing that you have too much is completely fine. So, um, yeah, and just all the small things like how to address people in an email and, and stuff like that, you just naturally pick up um, with time. Um, so my advice would be not to sort of overthink anything when you start and just do your best because that's all you can do. But um, yeah, that's all for me. Feel free to add me on LinkedIn if you have any questions as well. Um, I'll pass you on to Ewan. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Ewan. Uh, I'm a third seat trainee based in the Edinburgh office. Uh, I'm currently in the ICE disputes team um, as well as, as Josh. Um, my previous two seats have been in banking in Edinburgh and I was also in the power and renewables team in Glasgow. Um, so I'm going to quickly talk about my journey in CMS today and then sort of cover some more general points uh, about the training contract um, that you might want to know about. So um, my journey in CMS started um, in the second year of university. Um, I studied uh, law at the University of Glasgow and in my second year I applied to be part of the First Steps scheme. So that was a really good one week uh, experience uh, in the firm. Uh, and it was really good for me um, to get involved in because I'd never worked in a sort of commercial, commercially focused law firm before. So I um, really enjoyed getting to do that in my second year of uni and really spurred me on throughout the rest of my course. Um, I then returned for the CMS Academy in 2019, um, which was the final year that it ran in person before uh, COVID uh, affected a couple of years. So. Uh, the CMS Academy for me involved going down to London for one week uh, and doing the business of law week in the London office and then returning for a two week internship in the Edinburgh office here. Um, and then I started uh, my training contract and um, this time or just in, in August last year. Um, and I've really been enjoying it since. Uh, so the training contract at CMS is split into four or six month seats. Um, before you start in your seat, uh, there's a three week induction period. Um, so when I started in 2021, it was all run online um, and it covers a range of um, really useful sessions. Um, some of them are as simple as uh, legal writing, uh, which is sort of really good to sort of help you communicate in the workplace and that, that really set me up well. And other ones are on IT systems and more generally just getting to know your trainee cohort. Um, I understand that this year um, the trainees in the induction also got to go down to London for a couple of days in person as well. So it's good to see that that sort of thing is coming back. Um, and I really feel that through the induction you um, make a lot of connections through the firm uh, across all the offices. So you're not just sort of siloed into your office team. Um, I feel like I know trainees from all the other offices quite well, which is really good. Um, it's always good to have a big network of trainees to sort of lean on for, for questions when they come up. Um, so then after the three week induction, you, you join your team. Uh, every team is different. So um, like Jade said, the IRG team have a sort of full on uh, full day of training at the start. Um, most of the seats I've done uh, have a sort of more blended approach. Um, so in banking, for example, there were um, maybe a couple of hours of training sessions a day for the first two weeks, um, which I really enjoyed. Uh, sort of spread the training out a bit and let you sort of get settled in the team uh, as you were going along. Um, and well, they were really useful as well because um, I didn't really cover much finance law at university. Um, and it was really good to get sort of stuck into the, um, the sort of seat that way as well and understand the technical areas of law. Uh, as well as technical training, there's a lot of uh, sort of general commercial training. And um, so banking team I was in focused primarily on project finance uh, and a lot of renewables. So there were a lot of training sessions around the sort of technology that we were financing on that as well, which was really good. 
uh, and then you're just sort of into your seat. And uh, I really enjoy the fact that we get to do four rotations. Um, I've covered um, quite varied uh, areas of law from banking to transactional power and now contentious uh, construction and energy. Um, the projects at CMS that I've worked on are really exciting. So we've worked on some big uh, in interconnector projects in my um, time with the power team. Um, in the banking team, we, we've sort of did a lot of project financing on solar farms. And uh, at the moment, I'm doing quite a lot of work on sort of building and cladding disputes, which is really interesting. And um, so it's quite a good variety of work there. Um, as a trainee as well, um, you are always included in sort of firm-wide or team-wide activities. So I've recently just had the, the EPC team away day in Reading, which was really good. Uh, that was a couple of days in Reading doing team building and a dinner, which was an excellent way to meet uh, the wider team. And um, unfortunately, I couldn't go on it because I injured myself, but I was also going to go on the CMS Velo which was a sort of group cycle of six day CMS colleagues from across the UK, from Liverpool um, to Sheffield and um, across the Lake District and the Yorkshire Dales. And um, although I didn't go, it was nice to get the invite and it's always good that trainees are involved in these sorts of things as well. And um, so yeah, that wraps up my presentation. I'll, I'll hand over. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Ewan, and thank you to all of our trainees for um, your sort of summaries of a day in the life. Um, we've had loads of questions come in, so hopefully we'll, we'll do our best to answer as many of them as we can. Um, I'm going to start off with a really nice, easy one. Um, I'm going to ask I'm going to ask Ewan, actually. So what do you enjoy most about working at CMS? Um, so, um, yeah, that's a good question. I think uh, what I enjoy most is the really inclusive culture in the firm uh, and I think things that the other trainees said sort of picked up on it, but I think it runs right through the firm. So, uh, for example, we have an open plan office uh, in all of our offices, which I think really sort of um, lends itself to trainees getting involved, overhearing conversations, just being able to sort of lean over to a partner's desk rather than walk around the corridor and knock on the door. Um, I think the sort of culture of CMS is really that trainees are involved and everyone's included and um, it's not very hierarchical. And um, yeah, again, that sort of cycle activity that I was talking about was another good example of that. Great. Thank you. So, as I say, we've got so many questions I want to get through, so I'm sure it will come out what, what we all um, love about CMS over the course of the next few questions. Um, so, Jade, I'm going to ask one the next one for you. So, what do you wish you'd known um, about being a trainee before you started that you now know? Um, I think I would say it's okay not to know everything because um, I think now I had to remind myself that the whole point of a training contract is to learn and make mistakes and to um, have that time to ask questions and I think it's especially um, easy during the application process to feel like you have to be perfect and you put all that pressure on yourself but um, at CMS they just want you to be the best version of, your, of yourself so I if I could go back to when I was applying I'll just um, focus on showing my best version of myself and knowing I don't need to be perfect at every single thing because that's the whole point of um, learning and the process for learning. Exactly. Yeah, really good advice. Yeah, you don't. You're not. You're not meant to know everything as you come in the door. That wouldn't. That wouldn't make any sense, would it? So brilliant. Thank you. Um. So I will ask Josh you the next one. Um. So as a trainee, do you have the chance to choose newer areas of law, such as environment or sports, as one of your four seats, or is the choice limited to the niche areas of CMS? Um. Yeah. Good question. I think it ultimately depends on on what office you're in. So I know in London, for example, um, I think the variety of seats is is massive, really. So I think there they should kind of give you the opportunity to be able to explore different areas of the law that you're interested in. So, for example, say if you're interested in life sciences, you could apply for a seat in that kind of area, or sort of media law, or etc. So I think with the range of seats that CMSs have, um, there is that really opportunity to kind of really get a good sense of what kind of area of law you might want to be go into and dip your feet into each of those areas. Um, I think in sort of the regional offices, the, the seats are slightly less so, and um, sort of the, the choice is slightly less. 
Um, but even so, I think there's still opportunities to go on to comment to try and do different things. If there is a suit that you want to do that was in another office that you were in um, that you not necessarily have a training contract with, um, there is an opportunity to move over um, based on sort of discussion that you have with early talent to do that. Um, so I think it really just depends on kind of what you want to do and, and just make sure you put yourself out there uh, to, um, to to go and do that seat, really. But I think, like I say, that the, the, the scope is so broad that there really should be something at CMS uh, for you in that respect. Well, thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to direct one more to each of you and then I'm going to open it up a little bit more. So um, you and I'm going to ask you this one. I... Um, I was wondering if any of the trainees took far, part in the First Steps programme. Um, we know you did. Um, so what were your experiences like with this? Uh, yeah, so I did the First Steps programme back in 2018, uh, and I did that across the sort of Glasgow and Edinburgh office. Um, the first day of the scheme was a sort of, sort of commercial awareness presentations and presentation skills in the Glasgow office and that I think was an excellent day um, didn't really have a huge amount of commercial awareness in second year and wasn't particularly good at presenting either um, so it was an excellent sort of day to get a run through and um, you know sounds funny but I think that day also helped with other uh, law firm applications and really helped me present myself in interviews and you know focus on assessment centres as well you know you got great insight into the sort of structure that you should be providing for like answers and things there so it was an excellent day and then the four days in the Edinburgh office and the banking team was also excellent and um, it was a real really good opportunity just to sort of get stuck into some of the work and sort of just understand what a lawyer does because I think it's really hard to understand unless you're just sitting next to someone or looking at it yourself and um, so I think it was a fantastic sort of a fantastic week and I'm still in touch with uh, quite a lot of people on it as well which was it was good to sort of build a network from so yeah I had a really good time and would definitely recommend it. Perfect, thank you. And I feel like I've seen you present many a time, so obviously did. <laughs> obviously worked wonders for you. Um, super, thank you. Um, so next one to Jade. Um, I was hoping to ask the trainees how they felt on their first interaction with clients. Yeah, so um, that's a good question. Um, my first experience was actually in a client meeting. I wasn't um, expected to say anything in particular. Um, I was just asked to take note. Um, like Rachel said, that's a typical uh, task for a trainee. But um, that doesn't mean you have to be sort of on mute the whole time on the call. Um, I found the client really loves um, small talk because um, at the end of the day, they're just human, just like me and you. So um, it went a lot better than I thought. It wasn't too nerve wracking. Just having normal chat about train delays or what they had for dinner. It's quite you don't have to like just talk about legal things so it was having that client contact was really helpful because it gets you used to building relationships with clients which you have to learn um how to do for further down in your career exactly yeah like there's still people at the end of the day this it can, it can sound so daunting the term client but like you say it's that kind of um building those relationships and you only do that through practice so uh, super, thank you. So I'm going to ask the next one to Josh. Um, so um, this question is, uh, I wanted to ask, how are the trainees supervised? Yeah, uh, good question. So I think per seat, we will get sort of, we will be allocated a new supervisor. Um, so that will change per seat. So you'll always be, have a supervisor um, in the team that you're sort of going into, if that makes sense. So they have like a really good idea of your capacity and your workload and you can kind of go to them if you've got any problems or issues or, or anything like that. Um, so I think as you and touched on kind of the culture of the firm, uh, we're really encouraged to have like a really open relationship um, with our supervisor and make sure that it's um, we're able to talk to them about anything. And certainly with my supervisor, um, I sort of sit just next to her. So it's just really, really easy to be able to have um, sort of casual conversations about my workload capacity, anything that I'm struggling with. And then we can able to, we're able to sort of address that um, pretty much immediately. Um, I think aside from kind of the casual ad hoc sort of supervision, there's also um, sort of official um, check-ins that you kind of get every every so often where you're able to sort of um, get sort of official feedback from different people in the firm but that's, that's then filtered through your supervisor. And then I think that way you're able to sort of take on board kind of constructive criticism and things like that. 
um, in a sort of a structured way. Um, and I think that's also really helpful as well for your own progression development. Um, and as I say, once you do that, so you'll move on to another seat and you'll have a new supervisor then, which I think, again, is a really good opportunity for you to you develop your network and um, create sort of relationships in the firm and, yeah, just, just an opportunity to meet new people, really. Um, so, yeah, I think that's ultimately how it, how it, run, how it runs. Perfect. Thank you. So I'm just going to ask, um, we've got about 10 minutes or just over 10 minutes of left of questions. So I'm just going to actually open them up to um, your trainees in general. So um, feel free to just kind of take these as we go along. So um, I'd like to ask the trainees what they think helps CMS compared to its competitors retain clients and maintain long, long standing relationships with them. So if nobody puts their hand up, I will just go back to my order. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll <laughs> I ran the risk there, Ewan, yeah, if you could go, uh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> I think uh, this one really depends team by team. So CMS is obviously a huge firm and not every team works the same way. I think every team is given a lot of freedom in terms of what they do. Um, I think one example I'll pull out uh, for this um, is from my last team in the power team. So in the power team, we do a lot of sort of thought leadership work um, and we published a lot of law nows on sort of either regulation changes for the energy market or technology updates as well. Um, so those sort of articles were a really good way of sort of showing that we were keeping ourselves up to date and that's something that clients really appreciate. Uh, another thing that we did was sort of training sessions for clients so for example we did one for a big energy company on the legal aspects coming out of battery storage and um, so you know we give up our time to prepare those training sessions and give them to the clients and just to keep them updated as well and um, so i think things like that and um, is a really good example but you know there's loads of things we do for that in cms and you know that's probably something you could talk a whole hour on Perfect. Thank you. So I'm going to, I've got a kind of slightly unusual one. I'm going to ask you this one, Jade. Um, so is there a noticeable difference between working hours and workload in different offices, e.g. London versus Glasgow? So I know that might be slightly more challenging to answer if you're based in one office, but uh, do your best. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think so from the Bristol office, um, there's definitely a culture of don't stay at the desk. You don't have any more work to do or if it can wait till tomorrow um I usually finish around I would say six maybe um and even if I still have work to do I normally just log off and log back on um at home we have a good working from home setup um the firm provides for us so um definitely don't um usually sit there really late to 10 p.m just working away if I can do the same at home um for London, um, I'm not too sure about London, but I I would um, guess it's slightly longer. But again, I think the same sort of policy applies. If you do have work to do, um, for, um, people are happy to allow you to just go home and continue working from home from there. Um, but yeah, that's sort of my answer. <laughs> Yeah, it sort of varies, I guess. Like, it's not it's not hard and fast rule, I guess. Um, but yeah. I think everyone's experience is probably quite similar. Um, the work life balance, I think, at CMS does tend to be quite good. It's really it's really encouraged. So, um, and that would be a sort of cultural thing that goes across all of the offices. Um, so, next question for Josh. Um, so obviously most trainees here um, are from different offices and um, wondering how much interaction you have with the other trainees slash teams and offices. Yeah, sure. So, um, so I speak to obviously um, the Sheffield and Manchester a lot. So I have quite a lot of contact there with them. And um, so we have sort of a group chat set up and um, where we just talk about uh, non-work related things. And I'm sure that's probably the case for all those up in uh, Scotland as well as uh, in London and Bristol as well. Um, there'll also be like lots of events that um, get sort of filtered through from the firm and that they ask us to attend. So we all try and make a concerted effort to go as a group, which is a really good uh, way to just sort of get to know people and also just keep contact with those trainees as well. Um, I think sort of you and alluded to it as well, there are away days that people can go to, uh, so per uh, sort of department or group. So I think the EPC one for us, that was in uh, Reading a couple of weeks ago. And so that's just really an opportunity, not just to meet trainees from sort of across the across all of the offices, but also um, anyone at different levels of seniority. Um, so again, that's a, a super good way of just keeping in contact with um, people that you might have met on the induction, for example. 
I think also we had um, a trainee ball. I think that was uh, three, three, four weeks ago or something like that. And um, that was a great event. And um, that was, again, all the sort of trainees from uh, London to the, the Scotland offices, Manchester, Sheffield. And again, that was just an opportunity for us to just stay connected and, and just have a good time with each other. So um, there's lots of um, there's lots of opportunity to meet trainees uh, and keep in contact. And um, yeah, it's, it's really good. I think it's massively encouraged by the firm as well, which is um, which is really nice. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll go back to you again, you and now. So how did you find the transition or how do you find, I suppose, the transition between seats? Uh, yeah, so I think that's a good question. Uh, I think um, between my first two seats, uh, it was quite easy going from banking to transactional power. Um, the teams were even actually working on some of the same transactions and I was sort of just moving from one department to another and it was really enjoyed sort of staying on the transaction right the way through to the end um, that carried over. Um, it was the sale of a wind farm, which was a good one to get involved in. Um, I have found the move from my second to third seat, so from power to ice disputes, a bit more challenging. Um, this is my first one in a contentious seat, and the sort of style of work is very different. Uh, the skills that I'm developing are very different, so in some ways I do feel like a first-seater again, and it's, it's quite challenging. But at the end of the day, I think that's the beauty of the training contract, really, that you get to do four very different seats. Um, that was something that was really appealing to me um, when I was applying. Um, if you look at you know banking or accounting graduate schemes, they're going to be much less varied um, than a, a, a legal traineeship. So I think um, the variety is something that is a challenge, um, but it's something that I really enjoy. And to be honest, when I've gone from my second to third seats, everyone's very patient with me and sort of getting me up to speed and the training's there. So um, definitely opportunities to develop. Perfect. Thanks, Ewan. Um, so I've had a few questions in about application process, so um, I'll sort of combine them. So, Jade, how did you find the application process? And everyone's favourite question, is there any advice that you have with regard to the application process? Yeah, sure. Um, that's a good question. I So when I applied to CMS for the 2021 Academy, I think it was my second round of applications. And I think the first time I would sort of get to the um, the video interview assessment centre stage and I'd always um, stop there. But I think um, if I were to give advice, I would say just one, um, always look at feedback, always look back at your applications and read it back to yourself. Are you selling yourself the best version of yourself? And really looking at CMS to see if you're, who you are as a person, how you work as a person aligns with CMS. Um, and sometimes that just doesn't show in an application when you write it down, but in your head, you know. Um, and I think that was what was the main difference for me that shifted. And I was able to show that in um, interviews and assessment centres. So I just think showing the best version of yourselves, um, looking at your experiences and thinking, why, why do I stand out? What's unique about me? And I think everyone has that about themselves. So it's just like taking the time to reflect and um, trying to align those values. Great, and sort of I'll, I'll cover this again at the end, um, but there is going to be a whole session on applications um, later in the week. So, um, yeah, I will, I'll sort of do it. I, I'll, I'll plug that at the end of the session. But as I say, everyone always wants to know about applications. So if you are interested to hear more, definitely tune in on Friday. Um, so, um, Josh, next question. I was wondering if trainees are expected to manage early responsibility from the beginning um, or does this differ according to seats? Yeah, so I think I think it's probably the latter. Um, it does definitely differ according to seats. Um, so my understanding from the real estate team, um, and I think Rachel might have alluded to it, is that she gets quite a lot of responsibility um, from the outset. And um, I think there's so much going on, and so some of the matters are quite small. So I think that gives sort of trainees an opportunity to get involved quite early in, in those things and have quite a, a big responsibility in respect of them. I think in, in other seats that will differ. So, for example, um, in the ICE disputes team, our teams are, are actually working on um, like a really big trial at the moment. So it's been difficult to get sort of um, close to that in respect of have like a, a lot of involvement in it. So those tasks are typically, for, for me anyway, typically are sort of administrative in nature. 
So I think, yeah, it really just does depend on the kind of the type of seat you're in, the type of people you work with and what kind of work is, is ongoing at that moment. Um, but I don't think that's any, any reason to worry. I think over the course of your training contract, there will be lots of opportunities to have a real involvement in real work and sort of lots of opportunities to get in front of clients um, and support that work as well. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's what I would say, really. Lovely, thank you. Um, so, Ewan, I'm going to ask one, it's sort of um, in the application um, vein still, um, but more about the assessment day. So do you have any tips that you can give for the assessment day? Um, yeah, I mean, it's quite a long day. There's lots of parts to it, so I don't think this is a comprehensive answer. But I think, um, you know, certainly for the interview sections, just be authentic and be yourself. Um, you know, CMS that is a place where loads of people work. No one person's the same. So, um, you know, just bring yourself to work and your own personality. And I think if your own personality comes through, it'll probably land pretty well. And um, the other thing I would say is don't uh, don't worry about talking about any setbacks you've had. Um, you know, I think interviewers quite like to hear about how you've dealt with setbacks and how you've moved on from them. And um, a lot of people might avoid speaking about them in an interview, but um, I, I don't think you should. I think you should sort of use them as good examples of development. And I think for, you know, some of the team activities, just try and, you know, you know, work well with the team, but try and bring out um, other people's personality. So like, ask the others questions. Maybe if there's someone quiet in the group, try and push them to come come forward a bit as well. So, yeah, those would be a few few tips. Brilliant. Thanks, Ian. That's really good advice, actually. Um, so, Jade, next question. I really like this one. What is the best example you can give when the firm describes itself as a future-facing firm? Um, I would say um, the firm is definitely future facing in terms of all um, its tech, um, in terms of building relationships with clients um, in the tech space. So I'm actually part of um, a, the CMS Equip group, even though I'm an IRG trainee. And what they do is they host um, meetings where they invite small businesses to give pitches, um, small tech startups, and um, we essentially help them on that given IP advice, employment advice. And it's really interesting because um, you get access to all these different businesses in the tech space and we're able to offer really innovative advice on this. And that's because we have that future facing mindset, helping uh, businesses grow and develop even um, no matter how small they are. So um, I think that's a really good example of how the firm sort of um, is always thinking to the future and not always just um, doing what's um, common at the moment, but just looking forward. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so next question for Josh. Um, what is the employee collegiality and experience at CMS like? Employee collegiality. So I think I think that means sort of teamwork. <laughs> um, I think, um, yeah, I think, like I say, I think we've also sort of touched on the culture of the firm um, and the way that we, the, the way that we work here. I think it's incredibly open. Um, I think everyone seems to get on. I think I mentioned before as well that um, I think there's not there's a sort of a non hierarchical feel to the to the to the teams. Um, so I think in that vein, everyone tries to get on and um, tries to get the best out of each other and tries to club in as much as possible. Um, I think from team to team, there's definitely collegiality, collegiality in the sense that um, there's lots of sort of social events and, and, and activities going on all the time. So um, there's, I think, for example, when I was in the construction team as a paralegal in Manchester, um, we'd often try and go for a drink um, at least once every couple of weeks. Um, and then in the in the ice disputes team at Sheffield that I'm currently in, um, we have a, a forced fun um uh, sort of event that we do kind of every month and um, which is, is really nice and helps of um build colleg uh, team collegiality as well um, and i think that's what we've felt across the firm and from, from team to team as well and um, so i say it was really good and i think that just sort of goes back to the, the culture of the firm as a whole really perfect thank you so i'm going to, we've got a couple of a uh, few minutes left so i'm going to do one quick fire round so one more question each um and then i will um i will wrap up so um so, Ewan, uh, last question. Um, what is the most rewarding thing you have been involved in whilst training here? Um, 
I think the most rewarding thing I've done is uh, sort of some work on a carbon capture project in Scotland um, that's sort of getting off the ground and, and that was a really innovative project so I enjoyed that one the most. Perfect. That, that, it is a quick fire round. <laughs> um, thanks, Ian. And, um, and Jade, um, last question, how did you find the LPC? Yeah, um, I really enjoyed the LPC. I studied at the University of Law and Morgate in London, and it was really great because I got to study with the CMS cohort. So um, it was really good getting to know trainees um, before we all joined but um yes uh, my advice on that is just to get really good notes and you you should be you should be fine super thank you uh, so last question um for josh in relation to client relationships do trainees often take a lead and run their own matters in certain seats yeah so again i, I think as i was talking before just in respect to kind of the exposure that uh, that you get with with, with clients and, and pieces of work i think that again ultimately differs um, depending on what team that you're in um, but I think I, I know that I think respect with sort of more transactional seats um, where there's sort of plenty going on lots of different matters at any one point there's lots of opportunities for uh, the trainers to sort of take the lead on those, those matters and sort of get in front of clients um, under supervision of course but um, there's, yeah there's lots of exposure in that respect again in other seats there's not so much it just depends on how big the team is really and, and how much work there is. But there's certainly lots of opportunities for, for trainees to do that, definitely. Super, thank you. So I've had loads of great questions. So I will wrap up there just to make sure we're kind of um, sticking to time. So thank you so much um, for answering all those questions. Um, and thank you for all the brilliant questions that came in there were some really insightful some were quite challenging ones in there so um yeah thank you for that um so before i close i just want to ask the same question that i asked at the beginning which was um following this event on a scale of one to five how well do you now think you know what life as a trainee at cms is like um so that will just sort of take a few minutes. So I'm just going to uh, move on. Um, and just as I kind of alluded to um, earlier on, just to have a, li a little bit of a, a reminder of what we've got coming up, because we are running this whole 12 part virtual event series um, over the next few weeks. Um, and I think some of them, based on the questions, will be really interesting to a lot of you. Um, we've been really, um, really keen to have a variety of topics this year. So there's there, there's something for everyone. Um, so this Friday, um, we've got the Insiders Guide with the Early Talent Team. Um, so we'll be joined by Ella, who has been taking all your questions in the chat, and um, Kat Banbury, who is our... Um, our screener so they actually look at every single application none of our applications are screened um, sort of automatically we really do have people two people that go through every single application so they'll be running that um, session on Friday so do make sure you turn up to that um, and they'll be talking through all elements of the application and assessment process um, and after that we've got a session on commercial awareness and the importance of understanding the client followed by a myth-busting session asking the question, is the legal profession for me next Friday? Um, so for all the details of our events, you can um, pop onto our website, which is cmsearlytalent.com, um, and that's where you will register your interest as well. Um, please also remember to visit our exclusive CMS portal that you'll be invited to to join on registration. Um, this includes loads of useful hints and tips um, to help you at all stages of the application process and will be available right up until the new year. Um, so I'm just waiting to see what have I got your question. Let me see if I've got the results of the poll come in. I'm sort of um, I'm keeping you hanging here, so sort of building the suspense. <laughs> Yeah. Slash, I can't actually see that my computer is frozen. Um, <laughs> my computer is frozen up, of course. Bear with me one second. I do have it. Okay, that was just that was just to build suspense. It was it was genuinely intentional. So um, the results have improved dramatically. So now we've got twenty five percent of people saying they know understand extremely well, and um, twenty uh, fifty percent very well, and twenty five percent quite well so a huge shift in the sort of understanding there of what life as CMS of a trainee is like so I'm really glad to know that this session has been really helpful for you all so 
that does bring us to the end of the session. Um, so just thank you so much for all of your questions. Thank you to our trainees for answering all those questions and taking the time out of your busy days to help with us. Um, and thank you, of course, to Meet and Engage for running the session and to Ella for managing all those questions in the chat. Um, so that is it from us. Um, thank you for tuning in and we will hopefully see you at future events. Thank you.